I'm a trailer editor, and I've edited podcast trailers that have wound up on the pages of Julia Michaels and One Republic. And most recently, I did a course trailer for Jay Klaus and his Build a Beloved membership course. And today, I wanted to show you the full behind the scenes of what it took me to make his course trailer and all of the decisions I made so that you can see how a really great course trailer comes to be. If you think that you wanna get a course trailer done for your course, you can set up a call with me down below and I'm happy to chat and see if it will actually fit your course strategy and how we can make that come to be for you. So the first thing that I do whenever I start a new trailer project is what I like to call strategy and research. So I got on a one hour call with Jay where we talked about all of the biggest impactful points of the course, what the vibe we want it to be, the emotion we want to try and generate, stuff like that so that I can get a sense for the type of music I should be doing, if I should be doing any motion graphics, anything like that. So after that call, I got access to the course and I started going through it. But at the same time, I got on Milanote here and I started to grab all of his marketing materials. So his whole sales page, the video script that was currently on his sales page, and then all of the tweets I could find where he talked about build a beloved membership. This way I could get a full understanding of what Jay is doing to market the course and how he's positioning it with his target audience. Now, once I started going through the course, what I did in ClickUp here is I started writing notes of all of the biggest sound bites that I found, all of the most important pieces that I was finding and I was finding really engaging and potentially important to the target audience that Jay is looking for. This way I can, when I get into the edit, I can find all of those pieces and just easily plug and play them later on. So doing all of this helped me build the script and build the edit really easily. It saved me a ton of time and it was important to make sure that the script was actually really impactful. The next thing that I do in the project is I script. And what I'll do is I'll take all of the sound bites that I have and I'll start laying them out in the script to see where are they going to land, what is going to be good, does it sound good together, and I'll probably take even some of the clips and try and put them together a little bit to see if it even sounds good before getting to the point of having a final script. And so for Jay's script, what we did is we wound up only having a couple of new lines that he had to say because we needed to add in some extra context. We needed to get a good hook in there. And then we needed to get in a couple of good introductory phrases. And then we needed to get a good ending phrase here. And then everything else was just quotes from the course or quotes from testimonials. And this served as just a guidepost for the edit. And the all of the work that I did in the research phase helps me make this script a lot faster. So Jay and I worked together to build this hook where the goal was to show the impact that the membership has had on his business and to show the people that we want to attract to the course the impact a membership can have on your business. And then all of the rest of this is just things that I pulled from the course that I thought were going to be really impactful and then ending off with a really impactful ending phrase to remind the viewer book and the the viewer with what was at the beginning that it can drive a lot of recurring revenue and be, be something that you actually love and people actually love to have from you as a creator so doing all of this scripting serves as a really important part and a guidepost to where i'm going to go with the edit the last stage of this whole project is editing the whole trailer together. So we've done the research, we've done the script. Now we have to put it all together and actually make it something that everybody will love and can actually help convert customers for Jay. So the first thing that I did is I got my timelines in order, I got my organization down, but what you'll see here is that there's a ton of versions, a ton of them. I messed with this project so much. And every time I made a big change, I created a new version. So this is just the first version of the whole trailer. This is just me testing out whether or not I like the initial script with the title cards or like placeholder text. 
and making sure that it all looks good and flows well together. Will it all fit the way I want it to? And as I kept going, I was testing different iterations. This would allow me to get in here and start to see, is this the music that I want? Do I like the way this text looks? Do I like the way the whole pacing of the trailer works? Do I like the sound effects I'm starting to use? And I just started messing with it and messing with it until I got really happy with the different things that I was doing. So I just kept going and I got all the way down to probably like 1.6 here. And I started to realize that I liked having the original script more than I liked all of the different versions that I made. Like I made a bunch of different versions where there was just testimonials at the end, or I switched up the hook a couple of times. But when I got to 1.7, I just went back to the original script and I stuck with it because nothing beat the original script and everything that I did. And so for the title cards here, I went into After Effects and made them. And the reason why I made them the way that I did was because the dotted background was on the back of Jay's courses. So you can see the dotted background here. And so I thought, okay, that's a nice little feature. Let's add that into the title cards that I'm going to make for Jay. And Jay's branding was this these two fonts. So I added those in to try and make sure that it branded to the Creator Science brand. Next, the reason why this plays out so slow is because I wanted it to feel like a masterclass-esque trailer, something where it's so elegant and nice and like it makes you feel like the trailer brings class to the product, to the course. And so all of those started to become things that I would use as little motifs, little things in the actual edit. Now this, where it rolls and stops, this became something that I really wanted to do because there's so many modules that this was a very easy way for us to see all of the different modules and show that to the viewers and say, look, you're getting all of this content, but we're going to land on this one. We're going to give you a little piece of this content and you'll get a little bit of it to give you enough to make you interested in what else he has to say on the subject. And that's why I chose that with a heavy inspiration from Masterclass there. And then Jay wanted testimonials in here. So on the very first one, you'll see that there's a big testimonial here. And I was concerned that this was going to be too much text for somebody to read. So on later versions, what I started to do was I cut it down after a while. So not this one. I think it might have been way down here. And you'll see as it starts to build out as we come back here. Look, there's not very much um, sound design. It's getting there a little bit back, a little bit more sound design here, but it's still not that much. So the sound design just builds over time as I start to feel out what the trailer needs in order to make you feel like you're immersed into the trailer. And see, the reason why there's a whoosh here, because this needs to feel like it's coming in. And so if there's no sound effect there, what will happen is there, there won't be any feeling as to like you're in the trailer or there's something happening. It'll just happen and it just adds that extra layer of depth to the trailer. And this boom here adds the same thing. It makes it just immediately brings you in. It's another device that I'm using to help hook somebody into the trailer. And if we look here, down here, there's a little ripple down here, a little clicking that I put together because this rolls and I wanted it to stop. And I wanted you to feel like it was rolling, like you spun a wheel and that, that spin was going to stop on something. And so that's where the clicking comes in. And you can start to see how this all comes together and how complex this can be to make sure that it all sounds so cohesive and so amazing. And the thing here is that you'll notice that there's a lot more versions of vertical than there is horizontal. And I started in vertical because vertical can be a lot easier to start with. And then you expand into horizontal because you have much wider and bigger canvas that you can play with. 
So as we got down here, I just kept experimenting, kept adding new things. And any one of these, anytime you see these little markers here, it's marking the beat of the music so I can find the best way to match the actual script to the music and the animations to the music and everything to make sure that it all cohesively comes together. So you'll start to see even more sound design get added in here, get added in here. You'll start to see all of the different things like the, the cut to black here, helping us to create a little extra emotion in the end as we come to the crescendo at the end, telling you to sign up today. And as we got through this, I was messing with the audio a little bit. And so all, all these vertical ones here up to V2, this is me getting the audio perfect. So you'll see that I started ducking the audio underneath Jay's voice so that you couldn't hear the music as much. That way his voice stood out amongst the music. And when he wasn't talking, the music was much louder. So once I did all this and I sent it off to Jay, he wanted me to change a couple of things, mainly the text. He wanted the font changed and that's pretty much it. So we just changed the thumb font and we made it a little bit simpler. And I then added in a couple of extra things to try and add some new context to the video. And here's where you might actually see me making this testimonial a lot simpler because I realized that this long text is going to be too much for the viewer to try and read before it just leaves. And so if we come back here to like V10, where the testimonial might be longer here. Yeah, see the testimonial is longer here. I brought it all the way back to V2 and I made it only three testimonials. That way we got a little bit more social proof and it was more punchy and people could read it a lot easier. Lastly, as we got down here, I just kept making sure that I was adding in new layers and new layers to the trailer to make sure that it all came together nicely. So what you'll find is like in V2.3 versus V2, right? There's maybe the element of the images here, but there, and the element of like, the reveal at the end here, but that's nowhere in version one. If we go back even to version 1.17, there's none of that. But I added it in in V2 when I realized we needed something more to keep the viewer engaged. And so as we kept going, I started adding in more and more to make sure the viewer was engaged and that we had enough context for you to know who Jay was, why this is important, what you'll learn especially in the trailer. So this came in after a while to make sure that we knew what was going to happen in the trailer or what was going to happen in the course. And so the audience knew you're going to learn these things and then we're going to jump into them at the trailer so that you start to get sound bites, little tastes of what you're going to learn and how people have benefited from it. So as we got to the end here, everything came together and I just added in captions to make sure that everything, when you start it, it helps hook in people so that there's some change in the beginning because there wasn't very much B-roll that we could add or anything like that. So the captions served as that. And when Jay puts it on Instagram or Twitter or his website, he was able to be able to have people read some of what's going on in the trailer without having to click play. That way they can start the trailer start understanding what's going on without having to have any audio on for at least the first little bit. So that's kind of how this whole trailer came to be. Um, most of it was done in vertical. Some of it was done in horizontal. Now, if we look at the music really quick, I had a bunch of different tracks that I was testing on, but I landed on this last track here because it was such an impactful easy to use track that had a very nice end to it. And so if you go watch the course, I can't play it here because I don't have the copyright to it. But if you go watch the course, you'll see what I mean. The track really just carries a lot of the emotion and then the sound effects, the sound bed just adds to it. And you'll notice here, you don't need a whole lot of sound effects to create something really impactful. You just need some simple ones and you'll see at the same time as I added these suckbacks and booms 
when it landed on the actual thing so that you could feel that that decision that that rolling and that stop so that's what those sound effects did is it helped make it feel more impactful and so that's everything that i did to make sure that the trailer was as good as it could be for jay and that the trailer was a super impactful very well done piece that he would be happy to share with his audience and share on his website to help drive more conversions for him. The result of this trailer was that he was able to convert one new customer, if not two, within the first 24 hours of publishing it. And now it just lives on his site as something that he can use consistently to drive more interest and more conversions for the course. So if you're interested in getting a course trailer for yourself, let me know down below and I'd be happy to talk with you about whether making a course trailer and us working together is a good fit.